for small to moderate size and fallow seals. As long as the baby's testing is reassuring and uh, there's no obstetrical contraindications, those are babies that actually do better with a vaginal delivery. Babies with giant omphalo seals or omphalo seals that contain liver are a whole different issue. It is important in our view for fetuses that have a large or giant omphalo seal in which there is a portion or majority of the liver in the omphalo seal sac to have a planned delivery by cesarean section because of the risk of dystocia or difficulty in the delivery with the giant omphalo seal or because of the risk of damage to the liver during, the, during a vaginal delivery. Charlie was delivered by C-section and immediately rushed over here to Children's Hospital and put in the neonatal ICU. In babies with omphalocele, their bowel and liver are covered with a sac, and that sac is critical. If the omphalocele sac ruptures, then the complication risk and the risk of death skyrockets. So it's one of our top concerns when the babies born that someone's sole responsibility is management of that emphalocele sac, while someone else's responsibility is management of the airway. A lot of times infants with a giant emphalocele will have small lungs and require assistance right from the moment they're delivered. Charlie was put immediately on a ventilator and was on a ventilator for almost two months. For an seal, we usually wrap with a sterile dressing the entire seal and then bring the baby to the intensive care nursery. Just going to the NICU uh, for the first time was very scary because <laughs> you saw these very, very sick babies and realized that that would be you. Once the baby is stabilized, the issue is how is the seal going to be closed? Babies with small seals often are able to go to the OR and have what's known as a primary repair, which means they go to the OR one time and are able to have it closed right then and there. Then there are infants with giant omphalocele that contain different components of bowel and liver, and those infants um, are a little more complicated. There's not much abdominal capacity because virtually everything is out, particularly the liver. The majority of the, the liver is in the omphalocele sac. So the issue there is how you can gradually reduce the contents of the omphalocele sac back into the abdomen and eventually close it without causing harm to the baby. You could imagine trying to slowly reduce all of those organs back in well, as you do that, what does it do? It pushes the diaphragm up. If you have a small chest cavity and small lungs, any kind of disturbance can just push the kid you know, over the edge and to a major uh, respiratory crisis. We use a technique which involves bringing the baby to the operating room, finding the fascia or the strength layer, two bands of muscle one on each side of the emphalocele defect then sewing a Teflon-coated mesh sheet on each side to the fascia, so you have two sheets coming up, and then you sew the sheets together, and you leave the seal sac intact. Then, usually on an every other day basis, you can then crimp down on these two sheets and sew them back together so you eventually close the baby all the way. During that time, we have to follow them very closely to make sure that with the challenges of closing the abdominal wall defect, we don't interfere or have any setbacks with their pulmonary performance. We watch the pressures that it takes to fill their lungs with air. We expect that those pressures will be high initially, post-op, and once they begin to come down, then that tells us that the baby's ready to go back to the OR. He went through seven different surgeries in the course of three weeks. Uh, seemed like it was every other day. And so this can take place over a period of a week or longer, where they go to the OR every other day, every third day, until final closure. 